Hearts on Earth. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you rested fantastically. How is everyone doing today? I hope well. Made coffee. Cheers. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the follows and shit while I was watching my dogs take shits. Appreciate you. Did one of my dogs... Yo! My dogs are driving me crazy today. They're being very disobedient dogs. So if I just have to yell at them and clap a few times today, don't be alarmed. They're just being dicks. Good morning, Nick. Are you excited for your flight? I hope my advice yesterday... I was thinking about tall people... Wow, my camera's high. I was thinking about advice for tall people on planes all night. Like, <laughs> my number one advice would be don't go on them. <laughs> Which is terrible. They're not meant for tall people. We're broken inside. Somehow. Good morning, Luker. How are you, love? Good morning, Bobalicious. How the fuck are you? Good morning, good morning. Boo! No, you have a headache? Boo, that's not the way to spend a weekend. Something just fell in my eyeball. That's not the way to spend a Sunday? Boo! I mean, we can smoke pot and play the culty game and be cute together. That's way more fun. Personally, I sit on the wing. I wish. I try to get an exit row if I can, but tall, I mean, if you're not wealthy, tall people flying sucks. Tall people can't fly. I know. It's like, why didn't I get wings? All the bones went to my legs, apparently. Good morning, Sarah. How are you, my love? No, you got heartburn? Dude, I had heartburn this morning real bad. I thought I was going to puke. Boo. Is it from the pizza? Literally last night I said, I hope you don't get heartburn from the pizza. Did I jinx you? I really hope not. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I gotta turn this light down. It's very bright. I'm all tied up. Why? Why, Jesus? It's so... It's, I, I didn't do it on purpose. Good morning, sales, my love. How are you? But I, uh, I have three older brothers and a dad who all get heartburn from pizza. So every time someone eats pizza, I don't know. I just say, don't get heartburn. <laughs> it's heartburn food. I don't get it. Everybody gets heartburn from it. It's not just you. I just knocked over. Oh, sorry. Okay. We're fine. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing today, Sarah? I distinctly remember you saying that too. No shame, boo. Enjoy the pizza. I hope you don't get heartburn. Right? I do. I remember saying it. I know I said it. I feel bad now. I didn't want you to get heartburn. Boo does not appreciate flights, and they make me want to go crazy. I'd much rather drive. Amen. I would take a road trip any day. Road trips are more fun anyways. Like, traveling, when you get on a plane, like, those hours, you're just they're just lost. But when you road trip, you get to, like, stop places. You see stuff on the way. Like, the whole journey becomes part of the trip. I'm very pro. I love a good road trip. I grew up in cars, though. Like, cars are... I, I, I fall asleep in cars more comfortably than most places in my life. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just probably because I grew up in them. Road trips are fun. I love them. If you have someone with you or even if you're by yourself and you've got like a really good playlist or something, fuck yes. Oh my God, sales. What is this? Is this? Is this? Oh, oh God, weird. Maybe I sh I'll, re I'll repost it just in case. Everybody click that link just in case we don't know what that is. I'm recovering from absolutely losing my mind in my feels. What happened? Are you okay? Was it the club? I don't go to clubs because of that. Hi, Trap. How are you? I got my beard dragon sitting on my chest. Oh, my God. Cute. Give him a little tickle for me. I miss my beardy. She was so sweet. She almost took my finger off once, but that was my fault. I got more Sam's pizza this morning. And yeah, I mean, isn't that life? You got to have something. Everything hurts to a certain extent. I love you, Sarah. Um... So this, this has nothing to do with Sarah, but this, this link that um, Sales and I have dropped randomly in the chat, a friend of mine is a teacher. And unfortunately, in the United States of America, teachers have to supply their own classrooms. So you're given a classroom, you're given a bunch of kids, and end of story. And a friend of mine um, is a teacher and every year has to put together like wish lists and hope to God family members and friends can pitch in 10 bucks here and there to help out so her kids can have crayons and paper. And I think that's really fucking fucked up that any teacher has to do that. However, if it's someone personal to me and I can do anything about it, I try. So if you got 
time, check out the list. I'm a really bad liar. I'm trying so hard, though. <laughs> I had pizza last night, too. Not even kidding. <laughs> it was delicious. Pepperoni. <clears throat> Today's my official last day of summer. Oh, no shit. So what happens? So if it's your last day of summer today, you start going back to school. Do you go like Monday through Friday just as if it's a normal school week, but there's no kids there? I'm really curious. I don't know. I've never. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. Pe I mean, how do you beat a pepperoni pizza? Like, I definitely love to get adventurous here and there. I love to try me like a barbecue chicken pizza or whatever. I like to try things. But. When I crave, like, you know, when you crave pizza, you're not thinking, ooh, I'd love that teriyaki chicken pizza or whatever. You're thinking pepperoni. Like, that's what you crave when you crave pizza. I don't know, man. It's a way of, it's a thing. I get it. Tomorrow is teacher work day. So we will have meetings and finish prepping our rooms. Kids start Tuesday. Wow. Isn't it August? Whoa. Kids start so early. Is that normal? Or is this just me being totally out of touch with school now? Butter chicken pizza. Wait, wait, wait. Like Indian, like butter chicken, like from an Indian restaurant? Because I'd eat the fuck out of that. The One of my favorite pizzas I've ever had in my life was from a pizza place from my college town. Um, the pizza place is called Pizza Time. I don't know if they're anywhere outside of Washington State. But in Washington State, there's a place called Pizza Time. And they're real popular in college for college kids because they're open until like 4 a.m. or something. And they had a fucking chicken teriyaki pizza. And it was not pizza. I mean, it was a pizza, but it was like there was teriyaki sauce, chicken, chives, little like blops of cream cheese put all over it. The Theoretically, the strangest thing you'd ever read on a menu, but I crave it to this day. Like it was so fucking good. Is August? Wow. I thought only college kids started up in August. I'm a dumbass. Some districts have more than one teacher work day, but mine only has one. So I've spent the last week doing unpaid labor. Um, Just just for just for, you know, oops. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not anti anchovies. I don't like the little bones. That is my only qualm with anchovies on anything. I've gone to places where they put anchovies like in the, uh, like in the salad dressing for a Caesar or something. And if I, if I'm getting slivers in my tongue, like we've got a problem. That bothers me. I don't want slivers in my tongue. Stop it. Uh, Sorry, I lost my coffee. Oh, hi, ZL. It's good to see you. Thank you for stopping by to say hi. You said you had a beardie. What's the best thing you did to bond with it as a juvenile? Honestly, I had her out constantly. Like, I literally, like, not just not holding her necessarily, but I would just have her out and let her crawl around in the kitchen while I was doing stuff. And honestly, like, when it comes to, like, reptiles and insects and things of that nature they don't have the capacity of brain function that you and I have for for brain thinking they don't think about thinking so like you're never I don't mean this to be like rude you know if you have reptiles you know what I mean you're never gonna be like best friends with your snake or your bearded dragon your best bet is to make them feel as safe and comfortable around you as inhumanly possible as humanly possible and that will make them much more likely to be they, they don't it's hard to explain. It's not like a dog coming up and liking being scratched. They're going to crawl into your hand because they're going to associate that with food or something. But they're going to know your hand is safe. Oh, yeah. Don't let them run around with a cat. However, I don't know. Bearded dragons are pretty hardcore. I'd be more afraid of the for the cat than the bearded dragon. <laughs> Dude, you've had... Oh, my God. I need to find a butter chicken pizza now. Cocky, why are, cocky and crispy making my mouth drool in the morning. Stop it. Meat lovers with all the meat. Oh, my God. I have such a terrible memory of a meat lover's pizza. <laughs> there are also some schools here that are considered, quote, unquote, balanced calendar. They start mid-July, but get two weeks off in the fall and two weeks off in the spring. Weird. Does that do you would you prefer something like that? I made butter chicken today. My favorite thing is to make grilled cheese toast with the leftovers on it. Oh, my God. Yum. Oh, yes. That sounds so fucking good. Curious. Shut up. Oh, yum. Mm. it's kind of a symbiotic yep you're gonna have more of a symbiotic like for instance my tarantulas I have lots of spiders I have them in this office with me some of them are really behind me one is literally right here next to me and spiders have one brain cell 
versus our gooey, gelatinous mass of millions. And so some of my tarantulas, if someone was to watch me interact with them, they might be like, oh, wow, she's really bonded with that tarantula. But there's there's no such thing. Like, they can't. They are pure instinct. They're prehistoric, you know? Um, what I have done is I've kept them in my immediate vicinity. So when I'm loud, talking, walking, all of that is their environment all the time. So they're used to it and they're comfortable in it. And so none of my spiders are afraid of me. That's my biggest goal is to make sure none of my animals are afraid of me. And so like whatever you can do to create like to simulate the most natural environment for your bearded dragon and and incorporate yourself into it. That I think is the number one best way to get an animal to like bond or not be afraid of you and be easy to handle, easy to feed, all that kind of stuff. Dude, I want to go back to Georgia so bad. Don't even put it past me. I will. Deep pan pizza with spaghetti. Wait, on the pizza? Hi, Gregarious. How are you, love? I would for sure because that two-week break is better at preventing burnout for everyone. You start earlier, but you get more breaks throughout. I would like that, too. I was going to say the same thing. It just sounds like a better plan. The, I mean, summer when I was in school and when you were in school, too, like, you know, we basically got, like, two months off or whatever. Whatever I learned the previous year was gone in those two months. Like, it's fucking gone. I didn't know shit by the time I went back to school. And I always thought, like, maybe shorter breaks would be better because I'm not, like, washing my brain of everything. Can I take out the spiders? I can, but I don't. And I don't advise anyone handle their tarantulas simply because, A, there is no benefit to handling your tarantula. They don't bond. There's nothing going on there. And they're insanely delicate. And, like... The vast majority of tarantulas don't have the ability to climb walls like spiders, you know, like house spiders and stuff, climb walls and stuff. Most tarantulas live on the ground or underground, and they don't spin webs that allow them to climb. They don't do any of that. So when you hold one and it gets spooked by something and speeds off your hand, it only needs about three inches of a fault for its ass to explode, and they just die. And it's hor I've, it's never happened to me, but I've read so many horror stories about it, and it's just... When you getting away with holding one and not killing it, you're just winning like some stupid contest in your head. Like, good for you. You risked your tarantula's life. Like, for what? That's that's where I come from on it. Whereas like snakes and shit, like they're not gonna fall and die. They're clinged. But tarantula's very, very delicate. So I don't handle any of mine. Some of them, I have a few that I've just had for a really long time that are really used to me. So when I feed them, they'll like slowly lumber out of their enclosure to eat it on my arm sometimes. And I try to prevent that as much as possible. But if it happens, I just lay my arm on the ground. So there's no possibility of them falling and let them finish their food. But other than that, I, I try not to. It's just not safe. I don't want to kill my fucking animals. Um, just to clarify, when you said you had a beardy once, you were referring to Zeke, right? Why did you nearly pick your finger? So this is the problem. I made the mistake of trying to feed Zeke with my bare fingers and it, instead of the giant pinchers. Like, normally what he does is I make him sit and stay, and then I have these, these guys. I've got these guys, and I dangle the food above his mouth so that he doesn't get my hand. But the problem was I was being a little lackadaisical, and I dangled the food with my fingers above his mouth, and he went up for it, and he got my finger. Thank fuck he went through my nail bed, so it didn't take my finger off, but it definitely could have taken my finger off. Bearded dragons have a strong jaw. Beware your cat. Hi, Scooter. How are you? Hi, Myron. I wish they taught us stuff that could be used over the summer. Me too. Like, I remember watching movies and shit when I was a kid where they'd, like, it'd be kids going to, like, a private school and they'd be like, this is your summer reading list. And all the kids would be like, oh my god, a summer reading list. I would have fucking killed for a summer reading list. Like, anything to do. Literally anything. <laughs> would have fucking murdered for it. Hi, Wraith. How are you, love? Good morning, Ellie. I was thinking about you this morning trying to live in a box outside of Texas. Don't live in a box, but I hope you escape. <laughs> that was my first thought this morning was, Ellie in a box. <laughs> I'm at least, I'm out of Texas, guys. <laughs> Please don't touch the cardboard. <laughs> it's just, that's the world, though. I mean, I think a lot of people feel that way. It's just crazy. It makes my soul, oh, thank you. Sit up straight, motherfuckers. I gotta fix my chair, actually. Thank you. Sometimes after stream, if I'm real tired, I literally, this is what I do. Turn off stream, say goodbye, raid, talk for a while, go pee or something, and then I do this. And I just fucking sit. 
in pure silence. But I forget, and then I don't put my chair up, and then my posture is terrible. Thank you. I hate it here. I mean, it's so sad because I know so many people who have lived in Texas or been to Texas, and they say it's beautiful, and the people are so nice. And it's like, oh, my God, did you see that Ted Cruz, like, retweeted? He's trying to... He's trying to get on the good side again, I guess. I don't know. He retweeted something about Trump being arrested. And he was like, yeah, go get him. Shut the fuck up, Ted. Just. You're done. The moment I saw your dog in the window of your door during that enormous ice storm when you went to Cancun instead of protecting your state. I lost any want for you to breathe anymore. What the fuck? That poor dog. <laughs> There was a summer where for a couple weeks at least I was sitting in a chair all day just reading books like my alien teacher and other Bruce Colville books. Oh, yeah. I did. I would do that like I could cocky same. I remember summer would start and, you know, like a week would go by and then my mom would start getting, you know, being driven crazy by all of us in the house. So she'd take us to the library. And every summer I always had like some intense author I picked up. Like one summer it was Anne Rice. And then one summer it was... Oh God, what was that series called? It was like Everworld or something. It was a young adult series. I could I could probably, if I thought real hard about it, go through each summer of my childhood and name like the books I obsessed over because that was all, all I had to do. I was going crazy. Pokes that out. Hi, Young. How are you, love? Tucks Young at heart back in. <laughs> could he just not eye roll? I can't stand that guy. Right, like can he just, I think Bo Burnham said it the best. I don't, I don't want to steal it. But, like, can he just shut the fuck up? Just shut the fuck up. Just, just at any one time of any one moment in the day, just, just shut the fuck up. We're done now. Jeez. This summer, I read eight books not meant for children. Oh, my God. Was it amazing? How many books have I read this summer? Uh, this summer was a reading summer for me, too, Sarah. I, I kind of... The last year, you know, with Millie dying and all that, like, I was depressed. Big shocker there. And I really, I, I, last year, like, during the winter time, I wasn't, I didn't read for, like, a month. And I don't think I've ever gone a month in my life without reading a book. Like, not finishing a book, but, you know, at least having one going. I didn't because I just, I couldn't sit in silence at all. Like, I would just start to get panicky and cry and shit. So this summer was, like, I bought a stack of books and I was, like, I'm fucking reading these. I've, I've actually gotten through a fair amount of them. Which one am I on? Oh, God, it's in my bedroom. Shit. I don't remember what it's called. It's good, though. Oh, God, Inside is so genius. I listen to it way too much. Bo is so... Fu I, I'm the same, Ellie. I just love him. I read, I read a young adult series, read Tom Segura. Oh, is Tom Segura's book good? I haven't read it yet, and I want to so bad. I read novels and short stories online constantly. Me too. All the time. And when I'm not, that's when I know I'm really sad. Like when I haven't read for a while, that's when I know something's wrong with me. Because books are my solace. Like that's where I go when I'm sad, happy, anything I fucking love reading. And when I'm not, that's when I can feel it. I'm like, something's wrong. Because I just can't get into one. You know, I can't like fall into it. And I can pretty much read anything. Like I'll struggle bust through a shitty book. I like to get them done. I don't want like... I have a few books that are just so bad I stopped reading them and I still think about them like 10 years later. I'm like, fuck, I got to finish it. Even though it's terrible. Oh my God, Sarah, fuck yes. I'll, I'll mail you back a book. I have so many. But I want to read his book real bad. His stand-up was so fucking funny. Oh my fucking God. I, I was crying during parts of his stand-up. It was so good. Tom Segura is a funny fuck. We're actually seeing his buddy... Um, uh, oh my god. The machine! Kurt Kier uh God, what's his last name? Kirsch? Kirsch? Fuck my fucking brain. We're seeing him in September. I just totally blanked on his name. He's very funny. They do a podcast together a lot. Why? I hate my brain. Bert Kreischer. Thank you. Jesus fuck. I can remember the day we're seeing them, September 13th, we're seeing Burt Kreischer, but why I can't remember the fucking name, nobody knows! Ugh. 
I'm very excited for that one as well. Burt Kreischer's fucking funny. Thank you, Supa. I appreciate you. Thank you, Young. Good morning, Taco. How you doing, honey boo? Oh my gosh, thank you. Did you take your joy today? Never forget to take your joy, and I guarantee your day will go as smooth as velvet. I just started a new fantasy. I'm going to go grab it. It's in my purse. I just started a new fantasy book. You might like, Ellie. This guy. I just started it, so I literally, I won't even tell you anything because it might be spoilers. Um, I usually have like four books going at a time. So if you're like, wait, didn't you just say you don't remember the book and you don't? Yeah, that's a different one. Don't worry about it. <laughs> my parents would have to take my books away or I would read through the night. Me too. My mom literally would take my books away. She, I didn't have a bookshelf in my bedroom. I wasn't allowed. Same. I wasn't allowed a bookshelf in my bedroom and I wasn't allowed to have my color crayons in my bedroom because I would never sleep. I would read all night long or color all night long. Same. My bedroom was, bo it had like Barbies noosed from the ceiling. Oh, poor kitties. A oh, dude, clipping nails sucks. I get it. It's good to do it when they're young though to get them used to it. Mysterio, thank you for the follow. Welcome to my channel. Um, This is the book I started. It's called Path of Thorns. Um, it might be young adult, like it fucking matters, who cares, books are books, they're all good, but, uh, I'll just read the back to you, it's pretty good so far though, I like it. Um, Asher Todd comes to live with a mysterious Morwood family as a governess to the children. Asher knows little about a being a governess, but she is a skill, but she's skilled in botany and herb craft. She's basically like a plant witch. That's the story, but it's good, I love fantasy shit like this, give it to me. Any fucking day. Quick reads, they're fun, I'll probably finish this pretty quick. I feel bad for people that weren't given the chance to like reading as kids. I feel like a lot of people, like, maybe their parents weren't into reading, and so their first, like, you know, introduction to reading as a hobby was being forced to read shitty books in school, and it makes me sad because I cannot live without books. Like, I read constantly, but my mom is obsessively a book person. Like, I've been going to bookstores since I was born, spending hours just perusing. I, it's fun, but I get it. Like, I would never shame anyone. I know so many people who are straight-up hate reading. And it's because someone was like, no, you'll love it. Here, read Lord of the Flies. And you wonder why people don't like reading. Jesus Christ. It's good, Sarah. I like it. The other one I'm reading, God, I can't remember the name of it. I think it's called like Anatomy of the Heart or something like that. And the cover of it is literally a heart, like an anatomical heart. And it's like a historical fiction novel about, like, uh, the grave robbers who used to steal bodies to give to surgeons. That Like, the people who wrote Grey's Anatomy and shit, you know? Like, the original, when we started at being like, you know what, we gotta look at infection, we gotta start washing our hands. It's a fictional novel about that, and it follows a woman who's, like, an assistant to a doctor. It's pretty good, though. I like it so far. I think my mom suffered from the ADHD, so she does not like to read. Boo. She'd rather lie about reading a book and never read it. Wait, what? She lied about reading a book? That doesn't make sense. I grew up with kids whose parents made fun of them if they read a non-school book. What in the fucking hell is wrong with them? They made fun of their child and stop is really fucked up. No shit, because of the medicine they gave you, Luger? That's fucked up. Same bubblicious. Reading was literally, that was my everything. Like, most of my childhood is just memories of reading different books and how I was feeling about them at the time. <gasps> Ooh, I've heard that book is really good. Do you like it, Myron? I've seen it in bookstores a million times. I've just never picked it up. Same, Sarah, same. I hyper-focus hard on reading. If it's a good book I fall into, I'm bound to finish it in a sitting. It's terrible. Like, I'll just walk around the house stubbing my toe on things, cooking and reading. Like, I can't put it, I physically can't put it down. I get so hard that way, too. Yeah, I'm just, I love it. I mean, I'm not mad about it, though. I'm only mad if I can't do it. <laughs> oh, nasal steroids. Boo. And you can't smell or taste. Have you told them that? Because that's fucked up. 
she would lie. I gave her the I gave her the taking charge of adult ADHD book on her birthday that so that she could learn more about me on March first. Has she read it? I know I have the book. It's right. It's literally within arm's reach. I look at it all the time. I finished reading it, but like I reference it constantly. Right here. <laughs> it's a good book if anybody wants to learn about why their brain works in wrong ways. <laughs> Yep, visual memory is hard for me. Like, I can, like, someone will say something, will be like, oh my God, I read about that in a book, but I can't remember what I read about. I got to pull the book out. I can remember that it had to do with whatever you're talking about, but I can't, like, pull up the image of the page of the book or anything like that. So I, I reference that bitch a lot for therapy, which is why it's here. <laughs> I've always been a slow reader. I hate it. I tend to buy audiobooks because of this. Won't lie. I miss the smell of a new book in my hands. You know, Ellie, I wish I was a slower reader. College kind of I ruined myself during college because I had to consume such an asinine amount of material in such a short amount of time. I trained myself how to absorb the vital information by scanning like and sometimes I can't stop myself scanning books I'm reading for pleasure. It's terrible. Like I'll get through three pages in 15 seconds. That's not normal. And I'll, I'll stop and I'll go back and I'll read read them. Because it's just because I'm excited. There's a hot part of the book and I want to get to the next page. And I immediately, it's like my brain just goes and I start just look for words that will highlight what's going on. It's terrible. And I hate it. I wish I could slow down. Maybe we could meet in the middle somewhere. Because <laughs> I feel like I miss out on a lot of just like, you know, the details that you read a book for. Because I do that. And it's bad. I don't like to do that at all. But I, it, it happens out of nowhere. I catch myself pages in. I'll be like, I did not read anything. I didn't read any of those pages. <laughs> Bad. I studied neuro, neuropsychology and adult education. So how many, when you graduated, what was your stack of books like, Myron? Because I, I, all, all the students in my class, we all took selfies with our stack of books at the end of the year, like when we all graduated. We all had, I was the only one who didn't have a stack of books as tall as them because I'm six feet tall. But everybody, most people's stacks of their school books were taller than them and they all took selfies with them. It was disgusting. And I still have them. All of, Oh, I know. Myron, does it look like that? <laughs> I still have them too. But... My thing is, they were all so goddamn expensive. I can't stomach, do, like, doing anything with them. You can't sell them back because they come out with a new goddamn, you know, edition every year where they changed a comma somewhere. And I can't. Like, most of those books over there were $250 apiece minimum. I can't. I literally cannot. I just keep them because I just can't stand the thought of throw of donating, throwing them away, doing anything with them. Because donating them is pointless. No one can use them. They make a new fucking edition every quarter. But I've got these anatomy books that are literally like this. I used to prop my whole computer up on them when I first started streaming, actually. Ah. They were useful. I did it one time, Myron. One time. Oh, my God. I got to smoke pot for this. Hold on. Cheers. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Whatever we ground up last night. I My very first quarter. Freshman quarter. Fall quarter. I made the mistake of selling back books one time. I'm going to hit some pot and tell you what happened because it was such a bad time. Good morning, Mikey. How are you? Cheers to, if you got it. Coffee cheers. If not, take your joy. Did you take your joy today? Never forget to take your joy, and I guarantee your day will go as smooth as velvet. <coughs> so, first quarter of college. I don't know if all schools do this, <clears throat> but at my university, if you were a freshman, what happens is, so erase what I just said. Every quarter, you get to sign up for classes online. It, your, like, your position in line for, like, when you get to actually try to get into classes was based on your seniority at the school. So if you were a senior, you got first pick. Like, they want... Theoretically, they want to get you out of school, so they want you to get the classes you need. So if you're a freshman, 
fall quarter, you can see how hard it is to get into anything worth a fucking anything at all because you're literally bottom of the totem pole. So what they do is freshman quarter first or freshman year first quarter, they let you go before the seniors. All the brand new freshmen get to register for classes before anybody else. So I was like, I got to take chem and bio. I got all the like, you know, the big ones that fill up really fast that I wanted to get over with. So my books were astronomical. I think I had over a thousand dollars worth of books just that quarter. It was stupid and lab fees. But I got into the classes. I was doing like Chem 121, Bio 101, Psych 101, and something else. I don't remember what else. But those were the three bigs. So it was about $1,000 worth of school books-ish. Some of them used. And at the end of the quarter, so what you do is at the end of the quarter, you're allowed to go to the bookstore. Everybody lines up, and you can sell your books back to the bookstore. And if the bookstore is going to use, like, if the teachers decided they're going to use that same book the next quarter, they'll buy them back to you for whatever they deem they're worth. But this, I'm not exaggerating. My Anatomy and Physiology 1 and 2, two different books that are this thick, each of them cost $350 a piece. That's how much these books, these big fat books cost. So I went in there with all my intro books, which arguably Chem 101, Bio 101, Psych 101, they're not, those classes haven't changed in 5 million years. They're intro classes. But what the professors do is they write their own book. And every quarter, they go in and they just change a few commas or something. So every quarter, you have to buy the new edition. Otherwise, the syllabus won't make sense. Like, you'll go to the page numbers that they suggest for your reading, and it's not right because they've fucked it up. So I had over $1,000 worth of books. My mom drove me down to the bookstore, parked her car. I went into the bookstore. They gave me $3.76 for all of the books from that quarter. And I walked out the bookstore and my mom was like, so did you make big? And I just held out my hand. <laughs> and I never, ever sold my books back again. Ever, ever again. Because that's, that's it. And that's not unique. Like, that's what people get back. It's fucking ridiculous. And the schools, they play like the guilt game. They're like, this is how we... We supplement for education. Like, schools aren't provided enough money by the government to run the classes we need to run. So this is how we supplement. Why wouldn't you want to provide for your school? Blah, 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 blah. It's a racket. It's a fucking scam. And this was before the day, like, iPads didn't exist or touchscreen phones. <laughs> so you couldn't download books online. Like, that wasn't a thing yet. You had to buy them. Or what some people would do, like, if you were real desperate, I did this a few times. One person would go buy the book literally go to the library and photocopy the entire book and then we'd all pay them like 15 bucks for the printout a few classes we did that for classes like i don't know like i i got a i have a, a double major chem and psych and i had to take a bunch of child psychology courses but i didn't want to go into child psychology so those books i did not buy i would go to the person who photocopied them and buy the big stapled together packet for 15 dollars. <laughs> because fuck that it was highly illegal but so is what they're doing, in my opinion. Yes, it was literally felt like you need a fucking shower. I felt like I was raped. And I don't say that lightly. I felt so disgusting. I was, ugh. it was about Trey Fitty. Oh my God, it was the Loch Ness Monster. I've never put that together. It was 376, but it was so fucking close. God damn it. We provide with fucking tuition, right? And it's not on me that you're paying these tenured 80 year old professors that don't do shit hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And you're not paying the young professor who really wants to be here. That's not my problem. How about we all pay them a living wage? Teachers need to be paid. And you stop bending me over backwards. And stop putting ugly fucking conceptual art on campus. Like every time they jack up tuition, you'd see a new piece of art on campus that looks like a mosquito's dick. And you're like, that's what I did? That's, that's what you did with my tuition? Okay. Okay. One of my favorite professors took the material we needed out of $120, $120 statistics book and made it available as a $15 packet. Fuck yes. And that is what literally some students were doing at my school. That's the way you should do it. I had a couple teachers like that that were like, fuck the man, you know, some of my like liberal arts teachers and shit that would do that. Or like um, they would purposely find ancient books to put on that syllabus. So if you got a newer version, it was just better. Like you wouldn't be fucked by it. It was great. I had a few professors like that. But all my science professors, I mean... I don't think they had a choice because they'd be mad about it too. Like you'd show up to class and the first day, the first week of class, half the kids wouldn't have a book. 
because no one could afford it. And the teacher would literally be sitting there like writing chapters on the board. But it's ass. It is a racket. It's terrible. I did that a bunch because it was cheaper to print thank to uh, print it than to buy it. Absolutely. We did it all the time. 100%. If it's like ana- my anatomy and physiology books, I will pro- like human anatomy. We find out more about it, but it doesn't necessarily change. Bones are bones. Muscles are muscles. We're, they've stayed the same for quite some time. Those are books that like I'm going to I still open them up every once in a while and look at them. Those I'm not mad about keeping or buying. I mean, I was mad at the time, but a child psychology book, like, it's interesting, but I'm never fucking going to reference that again. I don't want to spend $100 on that. I'm creating a bunch of workshops and interventions for people with ADHD tech in the Navy. Ooh, so I'm, so I, like, implicitly understand how energy moves through space. Oh, my God. It allows me to create interventions for the neuroscience stuff because I know how to get energy from one brain to the next. That's fucking wild. Do you know how to turn it off? <laughs> I need that. I'd like to stop absorbing and feeling what everyone else in my vicinity is doing. Can we turn it off? Can I unconnect? Because right now I feel like like one of those like those power strip towers where it's just like so many plugs and it spins and you just don't know where to go anymore. Can I just, you know what I'm saying? I'd like to do that for a day. <laughs> No, get wrecked. I thought so, but it doesn't hurt to ask, right? <laughs> right, Sarah? Like, don't... Uh, dude, there's... In Bo Burnham, again, referencing him all the time. Um, I really like Bo Burnham because he has that insanely dark sense of humor that I have. And it's hard for me sometimes because some people will... Like, I'll be angry at myself and say, oh, just fucking kill me. And some people will be like, oh my god, is she suicidal? And, like, I need people around me that can take that dark humor and not immediately think I'm going to chug a bottle of pills. Like, I'm just going to say some shit when I'm angry. Doesn't mean I'm going to go do shit. And that's Bo Burnham. But he has, uh, he has, like, I think, is it on the extras? I can't remember if it's on the Netflix special or the extras he put out. But he sits there and he's like, I just want to let you guys know, I'm not going to kill myself. Like, I, I make a lot of jokes about it. I throw it around here and there, say a lot of things. I am not going to kill myself. However... If I could just stop existing for the next 16 months, I'd do it. Just, you know, blink out and blink back in. Just like a rest. (laughs) A blank slate for 16 months. I'd do it. But it doesn't work that way, so we're not going to do it. That was a fist bump. I'm here, but I'm not. I feel that too, Ellie. I get that. It will change your life. They are the main profession that ha- that has accommodations for adults, but you know me. So I could, well, I talked to my, my therapist is a specialist in ADHD. I mean, I talk to her about it a lot and we work with it. Um, her, she kills me because I, gr- I agree with her because I say stuff like that. I'm like, I just want to disconnect. Like, I feel like I'm a dog. I can't not absorb the energy in the room. Like, I can't turn it off. So if I walk into a space where everyone's pissed off, I'm going to start getting pissed off. If I walk into a space where everyone's fucking sad, I'm going to get sad, so on and so forth. And she's like, you should see it as a gift rather than a curse because you feel things stronger than most people. And that's kind of exciting. There are people out there that would kill to feel anything. And I'm like, why do you got to spin it like that? What, why do you, why do you got to be so positive? Can, can I not just, can I not just sit here and bitch for just a minute? You know what I'm saying? I come great, but I cry hard is what I'm saying. And like, I just like to be a middle of the road. <laughs> it's right. It's a vacation from just thinking. Yeah. Wait, wait, what's ANC? What's ANC? Do I, did I say it? I just, I just don't know acronyms. I'm terrible at acronyms. I don't want to die, but I feel to just not exist, even just or of even just sleep for like a month or two. I'd be so happy. Same, same, hard, same. Clovis, would you like to? Tr- I would. I will give you some feelings. I can't stop it feeling, but I guess that's kind of that's more defined. I think that's, I think that's more in my bipolar than my ADHD. I think, not a professional. I don't know. Ooh, Myron, yes. Let me make a note. She's in Baltimore, but she's dope. Oh, 
Active noise canceling, yes. Sorry, I'm so bad at acronyms. Yes, I would. Sales, weren't we just talking about this the other day? Because these aren't noise canceling. They are. You taught me it. Noise isolating, and it helps me a lot to have just the noise isolating. Holy shit! When you're feel, because like like I said, like I can't stop feeling things sometimes when things go off, and like. If Zach, for instance, is playing a really game in his office and he's legitimately angry and I can hear him belting, screaming at the top of his lungs at chat, like I can tell he's actually angry, I get anxious. I start to feel like, am I the reason he's angry? How am I going to fix it? Because, and I don't need, like, I'm not going to fix it. It's not my responsibility to fix it. He knows that. I know that. It's all just internal nonsense from, you know, whatever's wrong with me. And putting these bitches in, these, because they're not noise canceling, they're noise isolating, they don't. They don't have that mechanism that like causes the white noise, like the boo that blocks everything out. But because the earbuds are this memory foam, they muffle so much everything around me. Like I can't hear Zach until he's at the doorway of the hallway. I can't hear his office. I can't hear anything with these in. And it's not that I don't want to hear Zach. It's just sometimes it's like I got to get myself back down to base zero. And if everything I can't get away from like, ah, I can't rewind myself back to just back down i don't know how else to explain that it's really weird i know i probably look like a crazy person but that's what it feels like it's hard rsd what's rsd just cryogenic sleep technology progressing i wish adhd people pleaser shit plus my growing up with my dad that would blow up at moments Without uh, blow up at a moment's notice and just explode, scream at you. Yes. My parents didn't do that, but my brothers, oh my God, two of my brothers, they, one, my brother, Corey, he would like, you would do anything in the house. We had a huge house. We had a three foot, three foot. We had a three story, like hexagon mansion on a lake. I could be in the basement and he could be in the third story in his room. And if I coughed and he heard it. I would hear dun 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 down all the stairs. He would get this far from my face and just scream whatever he wanted to say at me. He would be purple and it would be right here. Just and I would crumple. I would literally just like because you'd have no idea what the fuck he did. It's so weird. It's weird getting over that shit as an adult, but that was a lot of my childhood too. Just like not doing anything and getting fucking abused for it. And then just left. Like then he would just walk away. Like he would just leave and you'd just be like. Did I just black out? It was so horrible. It was horrible. I get it. I sympathize hard. Good afternoon, Delphinus. How are you, love? Listen, I've been lurking here for a really long time, and you've helped me so many times. I'm glad. I can never show my appreciation for this amazing place. Neither could I, Clovis, to be 100% honest. I would not be the same person had it not been for my community. I got these Google Pods Pro. They sound amazing. I lost them. No. No, you'll find them. It's decompressing. That's a really good word for it. Decompression, yes. Yeah, you got to like reset. And I have anger moments too where I'm really loud and yell and I get really mad at something. Like it's nothing wrong. It's not Zach specifically. It's just like that's just the example of the person around. It could be the dogs. Sometimes I'm like anxious or something's going on and my dogs won't. They're just having a day where they're going to bark all day. And I got to lock them away. I got to put them in Zach's office. I literally lock them away and I sit down and it's that decompression because if I don't decompress and get back to – when I, if, I, if I'm given the chance to decompress and get back down to normal, I'm not going to freak out and be an angry person. I'm going to look at my dogs and be like, you guys are stupid barking fools. But if I am not allowed that decompression time and I'm constantly kept here, that's when I start getting angry and I start yelling and I don't want to do that. That's when I start like, you know, where's the ice pick, dear? And I don't want to. And I've learned throughout my life that if I can find a sanctuary to rewind myself back down – Nothing affects me at that at my normal level. It's when I'm here that everything feels like pins and needles on your face. It's bizarre. Bodies are weird.
afraid to help him with anything affecting my willingness to take risks too. But CK, I put some article in health and ooh, ooh, I'll make, I'm going to make a note to check it. I haven't looked at Discord. I'm still trying to set my phone up, my guys. Let me tell you. So this is the new phone. And it's the exact same thing as my old one. But you have to, like, mate them. And then literally for three days, this thing has been downloading and installing updates. It's insane. I still don't even have Discord on the thing. I'm not complaining. It's just crazy. I, I haven't had a new phone in a really long time. I forgot what it takes to make one work. I rarely do it now as I just have to be able to realize I'm him and manage to come up with ways to deal with it. Well, that's I think a lot of just like not being an asshole is being self-aware. Everybody has the cape, cape. Everybody has the ability and the capacity to be a jerk. Everybody can. I can be an asshole. Like I can feel it. I can do it on purpose if I want. But being self-aware and knowing knowing yourself. I mean, it's taken me years and I'm not perfect, but I've I've figured out that if I just you know, I'm sure you guys had the same thing. Like, my parents didn't quite understand what was going on with me when I was a kid. So when I would say, like, I don't want to be in a crowd anymore. I'm feeling sick. My parents would be like, you're not sick. You didn't eat anything weird today. You're fine. Stay here. So I kind of developed this mindset of just put up with it. Like, put a Band-Aid on it. Wrap up your ankle. But your mind kind of thing. Forever. And it turned me into a fucking cunt 24-7. Because I never, ever was off that level I just told myself like you didn't need anything weird you're fine get over it like this is just you and that was torture and I think it was actually like the first convention I ever went to where I kind of started putting things together I went to the convention and I love I've, I've never hated crowds they just exhaust me for some reason and so I went and I felt really good and by noon I was like feeling sick like I was gonna puke and I was like fuck what is going on went back to my hotel for one hour and felt like a new person all I did was lay on my bed for an hour and stare at my phone. And then I went back to the convention and I, I told my therapist that and I was like, the fuck? Like, I didn't sleep. I didn't drink. I did nothing but go to a quiet room. And that's when I started putting those, kind of just putting the puzzle pieces together of like, oh, hey, I'm a real way more pleasant human being if I respect my own boundaries and allow myself that come down time. Because that's kind of like a defining feature of, of bipolar. I don't know if it's a thing in ADHD at all. But of, of my manic bipolar is, you know, any any stimulus will jack me up, but I can't get back down on my own. I just stay here, and then it just starts surmounting on itself. And every event after that point just makes it worse and worse. Or better and better. Like, you know, I'm sure you guys have met people that you're like, wow, that person's manic as fuck. Because they're just shiny rainbows, glitter, sparkle, everything's great! All the time. And it's kind of that. And you gotta, like find whatever your place is to rewind that adrenaline or whatever it is i watched a tiktok where an autistic guy described his anger gauge as three pressure tanks in which he's constantly equalizing the pressure Ooh, i like that he says when he can't equalize the pressure and it overflows that's when it shows his anger and he lashes out that's kind of genius actually my wife does a decompression in her car every day after work before she even comes in the house just so she can get out of her work mindset and relax i used to do the same thing yep when i worked at the hospital i used to do the same thing like I used to say it was because, you know, I got to finish the song on the radio. Like, who the fuck just turns a song off in the middle of a good song? But nah, I would just sit in my car. I would do it when I got to work as well. Like, I'm kind of, I, I get anxious about being late anywhere ever. So I've got to be 30 minutes early to anything ever. And so I would always get 30 minutes early to work. And then I just sit in the parking garage and like, look at my phone for 30 minutes. Just chill. But it's that bring yourself back down to baseline so you can go do the job. And know you've got all of your mental tools available. And you're not like, you're not splitting your mind between do your job, but also don't freak out. <laughs> Love on the Spectrum is so good. Yes, I have. That's a good show. Sarah, absolutely. What I do at cons when I'm feeling overwhelmed, go somewhere isolated just to compress. Same. I used to make, I used to try to get my hotel as far away from the, ho as, from the con as possible because I didn't want like stalkers or whatever. But I find getting my hotel as close to the con as possible is the best for me. Because I can go do that decompress, go back to the con and have a good time. And be a much more pleasant person. I don't want to look scared, you know, because I'm literally freaking out on the inside or whatever. When my anxiety shows up, I start sweating, shaking, and want to bolt. I do the same. My palms sweat. That's how I know I'm, like, true anxiety, not just, like, anticipation or anything. My palms start to just, like, a magic power. I'm like, oh, okay. 
decompression routine is what they call it nowadays. Does it have a name? My therapist didn't tell me it has a name, but we work on it a lot because that's a, that's a huge defining feature of like where my, what I view as my most negative traits come from is when I can't do that. When I'm stuck in a place where I can't control my immediate environment enough to bring myself back down, i.e. airplanes. I can't escape anything. Like I am stuck. Whatever the situation on that plane is for X amount of hours, I'm stuck in it and I can't get away from it and there's nowhere to go. And those are some of the worst places. Like I dread them and I have to do a lot of like, I do this a lot. I don't know what this is called. It's just an anxious thing. But when I'm real freaking out, I start breathing with my fingertips a lot or I start doing this. And it's the only thing I can do because I can't leave. Like I literally cannot get away from your screaming child or your snoring or your breath or whatever. It's just, it's a trap. Because of my RSD, I also need that time to come down and think things over. See if my brain is lying to me about what's actually happening. That's a big one, too. Absolutely. See if your brain's, like, blowing it out of proportion, which our brains do. Mine does, too. Like, that's no, that's not me, like, pointing fingers. My brain makes this shit way worse than it actually is. 100%. My ex's primary partner would repeatedly not respect that and be like, no, we need to talk things out right now. Oh, that's the number one way to get me to break up with you. I'm a letter writer. Oh, God. She prides herself on being a mediator, wanting to fix problems before they get bigger, but fuck, that's not how I work. Hard no. I'm the same. I'm like, I'm the type of person that if someone comes at me with like an issue, I will literally be like, I will get back to you on that. I'm not going to, I can't because I'll be, I'll say something horrible. I'll get angry. My adrenaline's going to spike because I'm getting anxious. I got to go like journal about you, whatever the fuck you just came at me with. And then I'll maybe write you a letter. Literally, I've written a lot of letters because it's so much it's so much easier for me to organize my thoughts in a comprehensive, nice way on paper than if someone comes at me and attacks me and I have to verbally respond right away. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I cannot stand pushy people. Stimming. Is that what it's called? This. Everybody has a different one. You could shake your leg. That's what that is. Shaking your leg. This. I don't know if you guys notice how many times I recross my legs every day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if I'm stuck in a place, I inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and in forever. And all I'm, this is it. You could be talking to me and I won't even know you're there. Because if I do, I might cry. It's terrible. But it works. School is another one. Yep. At least with school, I felt like I could get up and go to the bathroom or something. But airplane bathrooms are almost louder than the cabin. What it do, DJ? What up, Tank? How are you? Who wants to move to Canada with me? Same. My mom is a fix it right now, and I'm a, I need to process. I can't. I've dated people that do that to me, and I've literally left them on the spot. I'm like, if this conversation is so important that you're willing to make me cry, it's not that important. Bye. Oh my God, Myron, you should see what my mom does. My mom's another very undiagnosed ADHD. But if you, we always, you know, everybody always has a notepad next to the house phone when you were a kid. The notepad would just have these, these like this shit all over it. And that's my mom. Or, I mean, she would sit on the phone for hours and it would be like the little girl from the ring. Like she'd start getting through the pad, like ripping the paper, you know, like the whole, it was just wild. Same shit, though. <laughs> I think most people have more than one way of stimming. Oh, I'm sure they do. I think a lot of people kind of um, kind of naturally come up with this, that a, a coping mechanism before they even ever... Like, this was not given to me by a therapist. I started doing this when I was a kid. My mom thought I had a tick. And it was my way of focusing on anything but her. Because <laughs> she would make me anxious. So I could do this in the backseat of the car and think about my breaths or just I'd circle one finger. I do this. I don't know why. I don't know where this came from, but I do that a lot. It's very comforting. <laughs> I don't know what it is. You moving to Spain? Ooh, are you excited? My stems run in my finger along three specific finger cuticles, both hands. Isn't it weird how we have that? I know exactly what you mean. I know what these fingers feel like. Like when I do this. I know every ridge of these fingers. I know what they feel like when I do it. And it's almost like a comfort thing. Weird. Brains are interesting. 
Dude, Woodshed, I'm the same. Woodshed said, when I feel trapped, it's so obvious on my face. I'm like a walking corpse. I'm the same. The moment I start to get anxious where I'm feeling sick, I get physically ill from my anxiety. I don't know why. I don't know if anybody else gets that, but I start to sweat and literally get a stomach ache like I'm going to puke. My face goes blank, and I suddenly become non-responsive in the conversation. Like, I, I, I can feel it. Like, I've felt it before it happened. It's a switch like that. Like, one moment, I'm super excited to be here because I haven't seen you in forever, and... Now I'm going to puke. And it's just like a night and day. And it's it's just my brain going, oh, we're out of serotonin. Time to check out now. Bye. And I hate it. And I know people see it because they'll be like, what's wrong? You got real pale. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> my brain is a broke. <laughs> Hi, Lizzie. Good morning, love. I used to stim with my wedding ring. It took me uh, it took me a while to get over it while I was, oh my God, when you got divorced and ditched the ring, that'd be weird. You can always get another ring. Marry yourself. Fuck it. <laughs> Ready for a change in better health care. I'm excited for you. If I could afford it, I would get out of this country in a second. I puke every time someone breaks up with me because in, I'm autistic and can't read the signs. So it's like a hard swing of emotions that roller coasters my body. I feel that. That's that's kind of like the way you described the hard roller coaster, the 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 hard swing of emotions that roller coasters my body is how I feel when I get anxious about anything, whatever makes me, stupid triggers. Someone saying, you know, we really need to talk, but later. So anything like that. It's like. I don't know if you know, but you just ruptured my spleen. Thanks. You know what I mean? Like, that's literally, I get it. Lilith's in my crotch. What are you doing? I would get divorced real quick. <laughs> Ooh, controller's so much better, isn't it, Lizzie? You're going to get so much better that game. It's going to be nauseating. After my dad died, my mom got a ring that has both their names on it. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's so sweet. Too vague. Give me a damn topic. Word. Word on that. Yeah, I can't. I literally, if someone says that to me now, as an adult, I will say, no, what is it? Tell me right now. And if they go, no, it's not that bad. We can talk about it later. I'll go, no, it is that bad if you had to tell me right now. And if you don't tell me right now, I'm going to leave work. Because I have to go cry for six hours now. Like, just fucking, if it's not that big of a deal, say it. Just do it. It's a big deal if you don't say it. And that's, my mind just starts going like, Pfft. yeah, same. I, fought, I cannot stand that stuff. Can't vagueness drive. I think that's why I never got into Facebook. I never. Oh, my God. What? Sales just gave us our new hero of the day. Are you kidding me? But I love you. I will never hurt you. I'm just glad you don't understand English. Canadian Brian, it fucking kills me. I saw a couple. <coughs> this was. Like last year, when Zach broke his desk, we went to Ikea to get a new desk. And there was a couple there, a couple of an older couple. And they were in the elevator with us. And they both had what looked like MAGA hats on. And they said MAGA, but it's, it was a different, like the, uh, the act, it stood for something else. It was like, get him out of office or something like that. I don't know what it was. But it was great. I complimented their hats. Both stop. I'm going to kill her. Katie's a 10. <laughs> I'm at a 10, motherfuckers. We're going up. Ugh, dogs drive me crazy. All right, break. Every couple of hours, we take a break, stretch our dicks, get a beverage, load a bowl, do what you need to do. I'm going to put my dogs into the yard because they're driving me nuts. And I'll be back in a few. <clears throat> in the meantime, pee after sex, wash your dick, and take your goddamn joy. Cheers if you got it. I'll be back in a few minutes. And yeah, we're going to play Cult of the Lamb. It's so much fun. If you don't know, you can like you can um you can uh, get the little extension and you can be a part of my cult even if you don't own the game and I think that's really fun. So, I'll be back and love you back. My dogs have started trying to dig under the fence to get at a squirrel on the top of a telephone pole. What? I thought poodles were intelligent. Baffled. Sorry, there was a squirrel. Had to control the situation. Welcome back, everybody. 
When is there not a fucking squirrel? <laughs> can they get to the pole? Yes, they can. The pole is in my yard. But they're digging under my new fence to try to get into the other yard because apparently they can get to the squirrel better. I don't fucking know. I just want to murder the squirrel real bad. All of them ever. But they never go away. There's always a squirrel. And my dogs freak out every fucking day. Obsessively. They're knocking over the... Oh my god, Rod. Do you think they're going to dig a hole under the telephone pole? <laughs> Maybe they're smarter than I realized. Maybe they're... Babe! They're digging a hole under the telephone pole to knock it over. Zach says probably. We figured it out. Rod figured it out. It's just weird because there's nothing in those other yards. Like no one has animals for them to... There's no dogs in our neighbor yard. So they're not digging to that. I just don't get it. Why are we yucking? It's a really good song I like by Charlie XCX. <laughs> I have such a hard time naming my stream every day. Never know what to do. So it's usually just happens to be a song I was listening to. Let's play some culty games, shall we? Isn't it? It's such a good song. <laughs> Getting all lovey-dovey on me. Yuck. It's so good. <laughs> Rule number one when dealing with squirrels, protect your nuts. See, that's the thing. I don't have any. So I can, like, get all fucking ballsy up on that squirrel, and I got nothing for it to don't want. I just don't, like, my. I don't even know what the fuck my dogs would do if they got one. I don't think they would know what to do with it. I think they just want to chase something, honestly. Like, it's innocent. I love my dogs. I don't like being mad at them. I'm just, I'm mad at the situation of the barking. That's what gets my, my nerves. I'm just like, why? Why? Shadow, isn't it a good song? <laughs> One of my friends from um, stream actually just got to see Charlie XCX live and took a video of that song for me and posted on Twitter. I was so happy. <laughs> Hi, Lady Wolf. How are you, love? Good morning. You're going to start culty game? Fuck yes. Let's cheers to that. I'm, I'm going to change my game category and shit. So if you're unfamiliar with what the fuck I'm talking about, there's a new game out that's crack. It's called Cult of the Lamb. Zach had been playing it for quite some time, and I've been watching him, and it looked so much fun. And then fucking Kunguru went and bought it for me, and it is really fun. If you, as a viewer, you don't have to own the game or anything, you can opt in to be one of my cult followers via the extension on the browser. It's pretty fucking cool. So if you so wish, you're welcome to. If not, it's super fun. It's just a cute, hilarious game. I enjoy it. It says my cloud's out of sync. Why? Sync the cloud, bitch. Hold on. Do it. One second. Um, I love Cult of Lamb. It's like a combo of roguelite and village sim. Exactly. Like it's my, it's, it literally is like someone pulled my dream game out of my heart's anus. I've said that a few times. I know it's repetitive, but it's so real. Like I love a gardening game. I love Satan <laughs> and I love roguelites. And this game is just so much fun. And the fact that you guys can name people, like I have viewers as my cult followers. I think that's super fun. Oh, the games app has been fucky today. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Thank you, Kel. Kel says the games appy might appy. <laughs> the app might be fucked today. We'll see, but thank you. It's good to know, so I know it's not me. Because it always could be. This, oh, I'm going to write it down. I'm always looking for new music. We have a music Discord channel, too, if you want to post music videos and shit in there. We used to listen to awesome music on stream all the time before, you know... The grand clippening. This hell. Thank you. I must. I don't have like a genre of music. I would say I listen to everything. I'm more into like. I fall in love with an individual person's like voice and style more than a genre of music. You know what I mean? <gasps> Synesthesia with that raid! Welcome, Sin and Raiders. My name's Classic Katie, and I hope you treated your streamer with the love and respect they fucking deserve. Welcome. Goddamn, this screen is so bright. Hold on, I have an idea. I'm just gonna quit it real quick. It's so fucking bright. Jesus Christ. For such a dark satanic game, I, you gotta wonder. <laughs> why, the, why the white loading screen, my dudes? Seems odd. Is it just me? 
Welcome, Raiders. We're about to get culty with it. What's up? You know, Myron, I did. And then all that shit went down with Spotify and uh, Rogan fuckhead. So I kind of stopped using Spotify for a while. Because that was weird. <laughs> count your sins. I can't count that high. What if I can't count that high? Hi, Sin, my love. How are you? Welcome to the cult. Cheers. No, I'm iron at school. <coughs> He's not the worst in the world. I take personal offense with him talking before COVID about ventilators and shit. Like, I think anybody that goes to school for an extended period of time to become an expert in something can get real mad when other people start flapping the jaws about it who have a big audience and those people get listened to. I.e. when he told the world that ventilators are the most dangerous thing you can do to yourself. No. Shit, where's my grinder? Fuck, I think I left it in my bedroom. BRB. <laughs> Oops. Anywho. <laughs> uh, had a stream called Trainwreck. Ooh. It sounds familiar. I think I have had Trainwreck. Is it? Mm -hmm. It sounds really familiar. I might have. Hello, Trekkie Queen. How are you, love? Sorry, I had to go grab my grinder. I left it in my bedroom. If you ever go on vacation without me again, I have something you can take with me if you start to miss me. Oh, God. want it though <laughs> is that weird it kind of looks a little satisfying <laughs> oh that's beautiful thank you for that um <laughs> it made my face hurt jesus christ is that real Worst thing about Rogan is he knows exactly what he's doing. And as long as it makes him money, he doesn't care. Exactly. And that's what makes him scum. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yes. Yeah, it looks like... I mean, here's the thing. Do we got any uncut wee-wees in chat? Because... Dope. But what... Does the snake... Is the snake aware? Yeah. <laughs> Want a Komodo dragon but only have snake? Try two legs. I like it, but also my head hurts. Um, I was just saying, like, for the uncut folks, this, if your heart, if your dick is, I mean, hey amen, Odious is right, like, unless you purposefully stretched it out, like, whoa, that's a lot of skin you got going on. Because every uncut dick I've messed with, by the time it's hard, that foreskin's down. Like, that's kind of the, the point. That, I can't stop watching the snake. That's incredible. That snake is probably like, what is happening and why am I so happy? That's incredible. I'm so happy about that. Sorry, loading a bowl. Cute snack, though. I love um, our snacks on Reddit. It's fantastic. If you just want to look at cute snakes, our snack. <laughs> it's pretty precious. Reddit can be a dangerous place unless you know where to go. 
probably partially due to people like me, but we're not going to talk about it. Cheers. Someone tweeted at me. They were pissed because I guess they were like five feet behind me screaming classy Katie. And I was fast walking the fuck out of the con because I was like, this is my point. I got to get some air. And I didn't hear them at all. I would never fast walk away from someone if I heard my name being yelled. But there was just so much happening. So much goddamn noise. It was so loud. It doesn't even have to be super loud. It's just like the 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 amalgamation of all of it can be like, Ugh. I mostly don't want you to miss the opportunity to make lifelong friends. That's the other cool thing. I mean, I know it sounds like s stupid when I say it because streamer and whatnot. But every every time I've ever met someone from the internet world, ever, 100%. I have a 100% success rate on this. They have always been exactly who they are in chat. So there's never that awkward there's never been that like awkward thing you roll straight into conversation like nothing like when Vissy showed up that was our first time ever meeting IRL in our lives ever and it was like oh hey there bestie what's up like it was just like reuniting with someone that I hadn't seen in a while and that's what it feels like because we spend and by we I mean all of us we spend so many intimate hours sharing parts of our lives and shit on the internet because it removes that anonymity and that weird filter of the awkward in-person shit that once you get in person all that's already out like you just get to bullshit and have fun and you already know who that I mean it's really cool it's been phenomenal and it, that's with twitch obviously but it's just really pacey that makes me so happy I'm glad I'm not the only one that has this amazing luck with this but I've met I mean literally just going to cons and meeting people from the communities and stuff they've always just been genuinely the person they present on the internet, the sassy asshole, you know, awesome human I got to know. And it's, that's just, it's very refreshing because like, I'm not that old, but I definitely was raised in the era of everyone on the internet's a rapist. Don't tell them anything. You are a little boy in Wisconsin. Your name is Tommy. Like, not, like the, everyone on the internet must've been the scary person. And it's like, it always reaffirms that all of that was just bullshit. <laughs> And I'm the internet person. I'm not a scary internet person it's out to rape people. I just want to make friends. Like, I literally started streaming to make friends. <laughs> that's it. And it's nice. It's very comforting to know that not only that that's pretty much awesome, an awesome feeling, but to know that those are the kind of people you attract. Because, like, all I can do is sit here and be live and hope that people click on my channel, feel at home and want to be part of the community and hang out. That's all I can do. And to know that the people that do hang out and stay are genuinely presenting who they are as people is fucking cool. <laughs> the power of the internet, man, it's wild. We need a t-shirt that says that. I feel that spiritually, Sea Lion. Like, never in my life did I, did I think there'd be a point in my life where I could say, the most important people in my life I met on the internet. Other than, like my immediate family, like my sister, my mom, and siblings. Everyone, and most of them through Twitch. None of them scary internet rabies or whatever that I was taught as a kid. Like, all just normal people who were kind of offbeat like me, reaching out into the nether saying, hey, I really want a friend, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> and that was it. And now we're all friends, and it's awesome. We can all just be awkward turtles together. There's a spider on my ceiling all the time. <laughs> I'm still fully expecting one day to get a message from Katie saying, okay, I'm in Germany. You offered me Mountain House. It'll, it's going to happen. Don't doubt me. I just went to London. Travel has started again, B. I'm learning how to get around this COVID bullshit. Prepare a floor space and a litter box. I'm on my way. <laughs> Germany is honestly one of my favorite and most one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. Ever. The people who tolerate our weird bullshit, right? Not only tolerate, but like identify. Like the weird, what were we talking about earlier? The, um, what is this called? Sensing. It's something that a lot of people that, like myself, I was just using it as an example for myself, but chat was really, a lot of people do the same thing. When you're anxious and you can't get out of the situation, i.e. like for me, it's being on an airplane or being on a bus or any anywhere where you're kind of trapped and you can't get away from a situation that might be making you like, 
I do I do this. I breathe with finger taps or I do this. I circle my fingers. It's the strangest thing. I've done it since I was a kid. I have no idea where this came from, why I started doing it, but I do this shit. And I could tell, I, I literally, I know like stimming. Thank you. That's what it's called. I know like every ridge of every fingernail, every finger and nail on this hand by heart since I was a child. It's very weird, but it's something I started doing. And uh, I... Oh, what the fuck is the word for it? Not stimming. Um, it's like uh, it's like self medicating, but it's not self medicating. Self treating, I guess. It's like a self treatment, self soothing, self treatment. Yeah, it's like before anyone tells you, before you even have the words to explain like what's going wrong, like why am I on fire on the inside because everyone's screaming around me and I don't know what to do. You start coping, I guess. It's almost like coping in ways that, like, so many people have so similar. So many people will be like, oh, I do the same thing. Vissy does this. Circle. Who the fuck? Does, like, I've never seen anyone do this in my entire life. I usually hide it under a sleeve if I'm super anxious. Vissy was like, bitch, I do that. Same shit. And it's just like, you just started doing it as a kid. Some people it comes out as, like, probably Tourette's type ticks and stuff like that. Others oh, doesn't. I don't know why. Um, Quebec to PA, damn. To Hawaii to Argentina, holy shit, that's a that's a spread. Kind of a cool variety of people though. Different but very similar. I think they're all kind of connect. They're all like the same. We're all doing the same thing, even though we're all doing something physically different. I think my therapist explained it to me one time because she caught me doing it. I'll do this. I'll start circling my finger. And it might not be active, like, uncomfortable anxiety or nervousness. It could just be, like, I've been sitting too long. And I, if my legs are so long, shaking my legs does this. Like, I'm sure you can see the camera starts shaking and my entire body starts shaking. Like, I can't really do a nervous leg and get away with it in public. <laughs> so I started doing this shit. And she can see me do it. It just means I've sat too long. Like, that's where mine usually starts, is being forced to stay still for too long. And the more people I'm around and the more noise I can't control is happening, the more I need to move and the more you're usually forced to sit still. It's the worst. I love concerts for that reason. <laughs> I can just scream and it's totally legit because everyone else is. It's not pent up energy. The, it, the energy kind of comes from nowhere. It's, it's anxiety like, it's I mean, at its core, it's your fight or flight response. So, you know, you, like originally us mammals had that response. If a Tyrannosaurus Rex was chasing us, your body would give you a shot of adrenaline. So maybe you could run a bit faster and maybe escape that or maybe lift a car off your daughter that fell or whatever. I don't know. A vending machine, whatever falls on daughters. Who knows? You know what I'm talking about. What happens, though, is because nowadays we don't really have anything we physically require that for other than, you know, extreme sports and Olympics and shit like that. And so what can happen is your brain can get conditioned to respond to things that don't necessarily require fight or flight response as a fight or flight response, i.e. getting anxious about a test at school gives you a surge of adrenaline that makes you feel like you're going to have a fucking heart attack because your fear of failing that test equates to the same fear of being eaten by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. But the problem is you don't actually go running, and so the cortisol that was released from your adrenal glands to create that Adrenaline boost just free flows in your blood and causes generalized anxiety disorder where everything makes you go, oh, no. Oh, stop it. I'm going to kill it. That kind of shit. Know what I mean? Anvil's acne style, if only. <laughs> it's a repetitive motion combined with conv com combined with confined. Wow. Combined with confined sensory input, it gives the brain something to focus on without requiring all the focus. Word. Like knitting. Ooh, I used to knit and crochet a lot for that. That feels very yes. I know you're right. I'm just saying, like, I identify. Like, that feels, yeah. 100%. And it's in the familiarity, the familiarity of it. I've never been able to do, like, fake fingernails. Like, those acrylics. You know, when you were in high school, everybody got the white tip acrylics to go to prom or whatever. I couldn't take it because it changed what my nail bed felt like. And I would pick them off. I just could not fucking... T I was like, no. Because I know what my fucking nail beds feel like because I do that. <laughs> it's fucking weird, but it doesn't hurt anybody. 
I'm just in general super in sync with myself, so I don't deal with that even with ADD. Good. I hope to get there someday. I mean, honestly, all the therapy I go to and shit is to get me to a place where I don't need that. And honestly, I've gotten really a lot better since my like breakdown breakdown i've i feel like i cope with daily life a lot better i know how to like prepare myself i've fa i know how to like get myself to z ground zero so things don't just tick me off for no fucking reason I, i've learned ways to do that so it's not like making up for anything or like coping it's more just understanding my biology and working with the world in those terms or those bounds or whatever you know Sometimes I wonder if I talk in circles. I just spit out what my brain, I'm trying to give you guys like concurrent, concurrent. It's just, it's a wave of thoughts. <laughs> that and makes me drag my ass towards the end of the day, making me more on edge. I hate that feeling. Been, oh, the cutting off caffeine. I always end up napping so fucking much <laughs> when I cut caffeine. I'm sorry you're feeling that way though, but it, that's, it's terrible. I love caffeine. I feel that addiction. Life is a journey on which we discover ourselves, I think, forever. And the more I come to peace with that, the happier I am in general. Mine is using my middle finger pad to vertically rub my index fingernail, mostly because it can look like a weird way to scratch your finger. Oh, absolutely. I'll do that sometimes. Just like this. Like you're kind of feeling that ridge of um, the ridge of cuticle a little bit. Oh, definitely. I used to decimate my fingernails. Like I would literally, if I had nail polish on and like I had to go to a movie theater and sit for two hours, by the end of that movie, there'd just be a pile of chip nail polish at my feet and nothing. Gone. Jeff just gifted a sub to Mongo Mondo Gibbs. Jeff, thank you so much for gifting a subscription to Mondo Gibbs. Mondo Gibbs, use a butt wizard of the highest order. I challenge you to go forth and be consensual in every way because nothing in this world is sexier and I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Me too. I stim a million different ways. I didn't even know the term for stimming until my therapist told me. And these guys actually reminded me of it because I haven't talked about it in a while. But same. I just think there's certain ways that are like my go-tos because they're less obvious in public spaces, which is usually where I get anxious about something stupid. In my opinion, stupid for me. Thank you. Me too. Sea line. I wiggle my foot and my toes a lot. Like one of my favorite things is I'll prop my, I like cross my legs and the foot that's on the ground, I prop it up like this. So I'm only on like that pad and I've like jacked my foot. So it's in kind of a weird ballerina position. So I can just rock back and forth on the pad of my foot, cracking my toes and moving the bones around. I do this constantly, but it doesn't look like anything. It looks like if I had a high heel on or something, that'd be your normal foot position. So no one says a thing, <laughs> but I'm just sitting there like racking my toe bones, listening like, mm-hmm, crinkle, crinkle. <laughs> oh, the ways in which we cope with life, right? It's a beautiful thing, to be honest. Honestly, like if you found a way that helps, good. And it's not hurting yourself. Some people chew their nails and like pick their cuticles until they bleed and get infections. Maybe do something about that, but. If you're not hurting yourself, like, go for it. <laughs> it's a board game where you put stones between your fingers. I love rolling stones. I also pluck at my beard. At one point, I had a proper beard going halfway down my neck. I went through an anxious period and plucked it. Dude, I used to do that to my eyebrows. Hard. Oh, my God. To me, in my mind, I was just, like, delicately pulling through my eyebrow hairs to, like, release, you know, the loose ones that were going to fall in my eyes. But I would just, like reek through them oh it's, and it's like you, it kind of feels good but you know you should stop but you kind of get addicted to the feeling or like one time <laughs> I had tweezers for some reason and I was outside and I just sat down in a lawn chair and I saw like one kind of dark stubble on my kneecap and I took the tweezers and plugged it plucked that one hair and suddenly I plucked every single stubbly hair off of my legs Every single one. Hyperfocus is a bitch. Glad it wasn't my eyebrow that time, though. I tap my finger on my arm, but that's where I'm really at the point where I'm about to leave. Oh, I feel that 100%. I mean, if I start actually stimming hard, I want to leave. But I try to... 
I always try to push myself for the sake of other people I'm with. I just don't want to make other people sad because I'm an anxious fuck. How to hold and place a go and place a go stone? Oh wait, those are like Mancala stones. Mancala. Oh bitch, I'm gonna watch that. Yeah, those are like Mancala stones. Was that the game? I used to be really badass at that game. Oh my god, you got an ingrown toe hair like on the knuckle? Fuck off. No, thank you. I'm fearful of going past upkeep on the outer area of my eyebrows. Don't touch your eyebrows. Don't do it. They never grow back. Mine are filled in today and still look thin and sparse as fuck. They are like a hair's a hair width. They don't grow back. Please, for my sake, don't fuck with your eyebrows. <laughs> You'll have a bad time. <laughs> It's terrible. Don't do it. They don't grow back. I don't know what it is with eyebrow hair, but they really don't grow back. It was like a strip. It was like a board like this, like a rectangle. And it had little divots in it. And in each end had a big divot. And you would like pick up your little stones and move along the thing, pick up the stones as you went. Or no, you picked up one stone and whatever divot you landed in, you took the stones, but they looked like those same. They're super smooth and very tactily pleasing to just hold and roll in your hands. That's my call. So I didn't even know. That, ooh, I'm going to I'm going to look it up because this one looks more complicated, like more, you know, fun. <laughs> like there's more to it. Good Chronicle for real. I, I feel very neurotic about it, but I would do anything to go back and prevent myself from ever having a pair of tweezers before the age of 18. If I could. Eyebrows, like, they're not, I'm, I don't care what people's eyebrows look like. For pers for personal reasons, I feel like I emote a lot with my eyebrows. And the less I have, the less expression I deliver when I'm trying to talk to people and it bothers me. I, it's like having being able to smile or be able to open your eyes wide. It's like I imagine it's like having Botox and suddenly not being able to look surprised. It just for me personally, I'm just like I feel like my face is lacking character or something. I used to read a manga called Hikaru No Go about it, so that's the only reason I'm familiar about the game, dude. That's dope. Moncala was super fun. It was really hot when I was a kid. Everybody had a Moncala board, and I got pretty darn good at it, and then everybody got rid of their Moncala board and stopped playing. I think because of Pokemon. If I don't clean up the outer areas, I pretty much have one complete eyebrow from one from bottom eye. No sh- I'm so jealous. <laughs> I have nothing. Like, I don't pluck this. Nothing grows. Like, I just don't have eyebrows. I destroyed them. Sometimes I get the urge to keep plucking, but my sister and mom told me stories. Don't. And that's the problem is I'm the same. I get hyper-focused on plucking, which is how I accidentally plucked every single hair out of both of my legs. One day. I get hyper-focused like that, and that's what happened to me as a kid. Like, I think I had maybe a minor unibrow right here. Went to pluck it, and just, it, like, I couldn't stop. I don't know how that feels good, because your eyes water, and it's terrible. I'm the same. I have crazy, like, coarse, wiry black hairs. Just not very many of them anymore. It looks like this there. Some of us are more mammal than others. I think I came from dinosaurs. I'm like a Goomba. Makes more sense. Or maybe a bird. The storyline is the Go Master is basically hunting a kid and he learns Go because of it. And do they fight with the game? Did one time take his annex and had them plucked? That was a pretty good feeling. Oh my god. So my little sister has beautiful thick eyebrows because thank fuck. I had already destroyed mine, so my mom and I were like, no tweezers for Sarah. She got nothing. So she has, like, natural, beautifully, I mean, they're gorgeous. Because we took her to, like, when she was, you know, 15 or 16, my mom finally took her to a professional and was like, if you really, really, really want to wax her eyebrows, like, they'll do it. You can do it. And so one time I went with her, and the lady quite literally, quote, unquote, what do you want me to wax? And I was like, okay. Thank you. That's what I thought. I've been growing these out for seven years, but it's fine. Having a great time. Bastards. Hi.
hyper focus is scary and inspiring. I love hyper focus. If I have a day where I know no one's going to call me, I don't need to do anything. I don't need to leave the house. Like I get very, I get a little hot and bothered about what I'm going to hyper focus on that day. I'm like, what do I want to do today? What am I going to devote this moment of my day to? But if I have to, if I have like an appointment in the evening, my day is just an anxious mess of me walking in circles because I'm terrified I might hyper focus and miss the, miss the meeting appointment, whatever. Terrified. I never played Yu-Gi-Oh. That was one I missed out on too. My mom thought it was all gimmicks. <gasps> Minty. Hey you, ever sneeze so hard your pants fit better? So you decided to take off your pants at the family reunion to see if you soiled yourself only to turn on your cousins? That's what it's like to drive a new Ford F-150. Rin, I hope you have sweet dreams. Don't forget your teeth is. Love you. Remember tomorrow's day off day for Zach and I, so I will see you Tuesday. I might stream tomorrow. I don't know. Because I missed days this week from the concert and shit. Depends on how my voice is. Because she's tired. But if she's not broken, I might. I don't know. <coughs> I hyper-focused my bathroom yesterday. Forgot to hitch the shower, though. Oh, I do that in the kitchen a lot. I'll start cleaning one little thing, and suddenly I got to clean everything. Yeah, but if I have nothing I need, like, if I have no appointments I think I'm going to miss or anything later or any responsibilities that absolutely need to happen that day, I enjoy it. I like to fall into something like that. It feels good. As someone who, you know, spent a, I'm sure you guys can relate, a large portion of my life not being able to focus on anything ever. Like, I was the kid that had to eat my grilled cheese while bouncing standing next to the table. Like, did I eat enough? No, take another bite. How about now? Like, I couldn't stop. Ever. Like, that was my youthhood. Terrible time. Not for me. Probably for everybody else. I felt fine. <laughs> exactly. You notice one thing, clean it, and you're like, well, it's kind of pointless just to clean this one thing because everything around it's a little dusty. Might as well get everything, and then it's just, now the floors are mopped. What are you going to do? At least your kitchen is clean. Oh, there is no middle ground. Absolutely not. You're cleaning a hoarder's hoard or you are creating it. <laughs> 100%. My chat just did the double. I'm going to refresh. I hold it. Hold on. Refresh, you stupid slut. Man, that. Look at this gif. This is the one I just can't. I relate too hard to this. Oh boy, I can't wait to see all the folks I can get to worship and serve me. Glorious leader Kyle just took a fat shit near the tents again. I'm personally attacked by it, but also love it. <gasps> Mondo, join. Welcome to your tribe. <laughs> I know myself and a bunch of people in chat do the same thing because I've talked about how on my day off, like I'll sit down to play a video game and cross my legs and six hours will go by and I will not have taken a sip of a beverage or eaten a thing or moved and I'll try to get up to stand and both legs are fucking dead. Like numb beyond reprieve. Like I just get to fall on the ground and lay there and wait for those horrible pins and needles to come back because I do the same. That's It's dangerous and wonderful at the same time. Totally get it. It's a beautiful, horrible thing. I'm shunning you now for watching dubbed anime. Do you know some people actually do that, Knives? You probably do, because you made the joke. They're, like, some people gatekeep that shit. Wild to me. Like, why wouldn't you just be excited people are trying to get into anime? That's where I come from. I'm not a hard, like, I've been in anime for years, but I don't, I don't watch all of it by any means. But why wouldn't you be, I would just be, I'd be like, yo, dude, I hope you find some good anime. If you want some suggestions, like, let me help you. Because in my opinion, everyone starts dubbed, but eventually goes subbed. Once they find one they really like, they always go subs. I think that's that's been my that's been my experience when I like show people cool shows that are in any other language with subs or dubs. They start with dubs because it's easier to casually like lackadaisically put it on the background and kind of get a feel for it. But then once they get into it, they always go subs because the, the voice acting is imminently better. <clears throat> 
I do that painting my nails. On my day off sometimes, I will just sit here and spend six hours because I can. I get to do like super intricate, stupid little lace designs on my nails, but it's fun and it feels nice. I just got to remember to drink water. Or they find a dub like three, <laughs> three. Oh, whatever do you mean? It's one of the best. A good dub is an excuse to rewatch a show you enjoy watching subbed. 100%. I almost said that, Mad Cat. I was going to say, everyone's going to go back and rewatch it, but I didn't want to assume everybody will rewatch it, but I do. Why work hard when you could shit on others, dude? Ugh, God. Because I want to sleep at night. A manga series I read 15 years ago just now released an anime, and I was shocked. Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer? Stop it. That's amazing. A lot, most of the dubs in, this is just my opinion, like, I don't want to gatekeep anime. If you're getting into anime or any kind of, like, subculture of media where you have to have dubs or subtitles, enjoy how you can't possibly can. Because if you can get the story, like, consume it. Because the stories are what you're in for. The stories are, the stories and the art, really, are what you want to get. Whatever makes it easier. But the dubs, the vast majority of dubbed voice acting is just so phenomenally... Uh, mediocre I don't want to say bad because I'm not I don't I'm not good at it like I couldn't say I could do it better but like <sighs> and I don't even understand Japanese or otherwise but it's still better <laughs> like I'd still rather under I'd still rather listen to someone acting in a under in acting in a language I don't understand than a bad voice actor in a language I do if that makes sense Like, I can't watch or listen to uh, Sailor Moon dubs at all. But that's what I was raised on. That's what I grew up watching and listening to. And now I listen or watch them and I'm like, no. Hard no. I don't know why either, honestly. Like, there's a goddamn fly in here. Why? How did a fly get in here, Bill? How did it happen? Um, I don't know. Honestly, like, I, I they, because the, the original voice actors are so good. Maybe it's like they got to be just polar horrific. I have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's just, if you're a, if you're a dub, you know, listener, whatever, and you have a chance, put on subs and just give it a chance for a minute. Just like five minutes. I might have just ruined it for you forever, but give it a chance. Seriously, it takes a minute to kind of get in the flow of it, but it's worth every minute. I mean, it's like listening to a robot <laughs> speak. <laughs> it's bad. And what's funny is the memes going the other way. Like, you guys, I'm sure you guys have seen the memes where people will make the dub over, like, a kung fu movie. And they'll be like, I am here for your daughter. But it's way more ridiculous the other way. I think we made fun of them because we saw how bad we are at dubbing shit. You know what I mean? Overlord season four just started. And I'm holding out so I can binge it all. Oh, fuck yeah. I think I might actually finish Sandman tonight. I'm kind of nervous. It's good, though. I like it. Oh, garlic. Hell yeah. Garlic and onions. What's better? There are dubbed anime that are very much better than the subbed. I probably haven't seen them because I haven't been that deep yet. Takes me a while to get through anime. They're intense, dude. And the episodes can be fucking long. Or there can be just a million of 10-minute episodes. So, like, 90% of the time you're just listening to the theme song. I know people love the anime of AOT, but the manga is leaps and bounds more intense. I mean, any I think written, written media is always going to be better. Because your imagination gets to fill in the gaps. But that's, I'm an avid reader. I'm going to be biased, you know? Um, Dota the series have gotten a new season. I know what I must do tomorrow. A new season? Like the game? I thought there's like a new show or something. Is there a new Dota show? Or am I imagining? Did I hallucinate that on Netflix? I don't know. I might have hallucinated. Please don't trust me. Berserk was a great dub. I, I watched the dub of Berserk. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, but those ones, did they get a good dub after they became kind of popular or did they just get lucky? Because I think Cowboy Bebop has a pretty decent dub as well.
everything I'm reading anime wise is usually just manga. They got lucky, really? Damn. They got lucky, then good on them. I didn't know. I was legit asking. I don't have an opinion. I have no idea. There's a Korean manga. Oh, Mang. Oh, they say it differently. I don't want to be insulting. Series called Solo Leveling that's getting an anime and that's going to be amazing if they pull it off right. Ooh. Still waiting for Ray Earth. It'll happen. <gasps> Dota Dragon's Blood. Thank you, Mondo. Sometimes I wonder, because sometimes I smoke a bowl before bed and I might have just hallucinated something I want to see on Netflix. <laughs> I, j I prefer reading it too. I, I like anime, but it's really, really hard for me to pay attention to a huge portion of it because there's so much unnecessary action music happening and or manga. I can like pause, absorb, rewind, reread. I really like the art of manga, but I'm kind of a sucker for it. That was that was my introduction to any and all. Really, any media outside of the US was manga as a kid. It was like Ray Earth and... Uh, um, 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 Sailor Moon Mango when I was like third grade and I still love it. I don't know. I'm into it. The style is still kind of the same and it's still dope. Take off Mono. I'm going to take off myself. My throat, my, my voice is so damn tired. I can feel it crackle crackling and I don't want to lose my voice. I get really fucking pissy when I lose it. But no worries. I had a lot of fun today. I wish it would have worked better, but we got a couple followers in, which was at least we kind of cheated it a little. There are some shows where it being in English allows them to show accents and like different cultures. Like, um, I blanked. The vampire one with Alucard. I just, my brain farts a lot. The Alucard one, you know the one I'm talking about. Fucking what the fuck, Katie? <laughs> Castlevania, fuck my. Thank you. Sometimes my brain just gives up on me, and that was a moment. Castlevania, I feel like, was probably one of those. Because they, I feel like they had a lot of, I don't know, not a lot, but a fair amount of different accents here and there. Thank you. Or Helsing. Yeah, similar. I love those, by the way. I like Berserk, too. I like both, though. I watched dubbed first, and then I watched subbed. And then I think I watched dubbed after that again. I liked both. I don't know. I don't understand the language to like judge it I feel like I don't really have a, an opinion I don't feel like I have a valid <clears throat> I do not have a valid opinion there you know what I mean it'd be like someone who doesn't understand English judging my voice acting skills like if you don't understand the words coming out of my mouth like I don't I guess you can hate the tone of my voice maybe the British mm -hmm. yep that's exactly what I was thinking of Rosario plus vampire. Rosario Dawson being a vampire? I mean, I'd stare at that for a few years. With the Japanese language, subbed has a level of emoting that English does not. I would agree with that. It's almost like they have an umami acting. It's like just a different flavor of it. I would I would agree with that. Not better or worse, just different. And in some... um. Japanese media, I feel like it's necessary to get the full message across. And if you did it in with English dubs, it doesn't quite do it. I guess. Like, I'm sure you guys have probably watched something in another language and read the subtitles. And it's actually a movie that's in, in English originally that's been translated. You're probably in a different country. And you're like, oh my god, the subtitles are hilarious. They're so wrong. Or the dub is so fucking wrong and hilarious. Ha ha. Like, see? I think Japanese is a beautiful language. I mean, it's half the reason I listen to, I watch the shows in, with a subtitle instead of a dub because I think the language is just gorgeous. I don't have to understand it to think it's beautiful. Oh my God, you shocked me, Trick. Hi, Bubba. Hi, Bubba, what you doing? My little midnight warrior. My licorice boy. Hi, what are you doing? What are you doing? Can you come say hi? Come say hi. Come here. I want to go outside and play, Bob. It's time. Bob. This is my little poodle void. He's fresh. Oh, and there's the other one. The noodle. Sword Art Online is one of my favorites. I love that one. I think you're the one who talked me into watching it. 
sometimes the Japanese is better, like some proverbs and stuff. Absolutely. Proverbs, proverbs, proverbs. It's proverbs. I agree. It's just more, it's beautiful. Like, it's because it's, that's what it was written in. The language it's supposed to be written in is probably going to be more beautiful most of the time, I would imagine. <laughs> well, in English, you were like, I know that motherfucker. <laughs> The best example is FMA with a character that showed up who was someone else. In Japanese, you had no idea until they said it. While in English, you were like, I know that motherfucker. <laughs> yep. I like moments like that, to be honest. I almost always have subs on in any game. I have subtitles on in everything ever. Same. Unless it's like uh, a stand-up comedy, because sometimes it can spoil the joke <laughs> if the subtitles are too fast they'll post the punchline before the comedian says it and it'll ruin it. That's the only other the only time I'll really turn them off. But the romantic mushy stuff, but same. I never get into that. That's usually when I take a pee break or a snack break. But that's in any media form ever. Not just anime specifically. So I wouldn't, for me personally, like I wouldn't sort it out. Anytime there's like some romantic mush scene in a movie where they're going to make out and make mouth, wet mouth sounds or body sounds, I'm the fuck out. Peace! I can't with that. It just reminds me of my days working in the old folks home. My rotation in the nursing home. <laughs> Deeper. Quotes from the nursing home. Not from a love scene. On that note, I'm going to go rest my throat because it's fucking tired. But thank you for hanging out with me today and being culty as fuck. Hopefully by Tuesday, this browser extension will have itself sorted out so you guys aren't struggle busting so fucking hard just to join the cult because it really shouldn't be that difficult it should be like a click click and then you're in and i feel real bad when it's hard for everybody to figure out every time it's stupid it upsets me should be easier i just want to see everybody happy and smooching each other and living happily ever after heavily after ever after same or happily whatever they prefer but i'm the same i just don't want to hear it <laughs> Sex Lexia, I'm gonna fix you. Don't even worry about it. We're gonna make you happy. We will make happy. I have faith we will make happy. Um, I'm not a quitter. And I don't think you guys are quitters. I think we're gonna do good. Um, my friend KPP is playing her very first day and playthrough of this game right now. She's one of my dearest oldest friends here on Twitch. We've RP'd together many times. It's another Katie, so you don't even have to like change the name you're using. And she's fucking awesome. Like, CK approved. KPP is one of my favorite humans. She's awesome. She's hilarious. That's why you're the best cult leader. I don't give up. And I will not make you fuck anyone unconsensually. We might kill you, but there will be no unconsensual sex culting here. Not today. And not ever. And honestly, C-Town, they're doing an incredible job. Regardless of the size of the dead team, dev team or anything, they've done such a fun job. This game is so much fun. Really, I'm a very patient person. And even what they've done so far, the way it works is so good. They've done an, a really good job. Like, it's everything I've ever wanted with integrating with you guys and just smoothing it out. Like, they've done just... I have so many, so much faith in this dev team with just this game and everything. It's so much fun. And it's so well done. Like, just the fact that while we're picking, you know cult is from your guys' little raffle from the raffle if you guys lose connection or if i lose connection you stay in there like you're still there you know if i accidentally ex exit out of it i can go back you're still chosen if you guys need to refresh it's still there that's a simple little thing that normally would be seen as superfluous and would be rolled over as like people can deal with it but that makes a huge fucking difference when it comes to live streaming with community use team as friends huge difference that is such a dumb little thing that i'm gonna keep forever that makes a huge difference in this game to me because internet sucks y even if you have the best internet in the world you can lose connection and just the fact that it still pulls you up gives me so much hope that's huge 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 and bringing back the earlier times of games exactly that's the way it should be just i mean it's like all these games coming out these days are like, internet's not real. Like, pretending, let's stop pretending and acknowledge that this is the world we live in now. And we appreciate those things a lot. Devolver's great. Yeah, Devolver has been. Uh, the, the studio is, hold on, I can tell you. I don't want to fuck their name up. 
I want to save our cult and make sure it's saved forever. My voice should be totally better by next week, by the way. It's just because we went to an amazing concert. And I shredded my vocal cords singing. So she's a little tired, but that's okay. We'll get better. It is Massive Monster. Massive Monster is the developer and the publisher's devolver. But yeah, I honestly, they've done a phenomenal job. I have no complaints and just hope. Like, I'm not one to bitch about tiny bugs, though. I played Skyrim for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of hours with no mods or anything on Xbox. So I'm very tolerant of things if the game is quality. You know what I mean? If a game is quality, a game is quality. It's going to take a lot for me not to play it. And so far, what I can tell, there's nothing like game breaking, you know, like it's a little glitchy trying to get you guys in. But really, I could manually make you. What is it? Like seven options for a character that are pretty fucking easy to go through. I could literally manually make you guys if I had to. It's not that big of a deal. I've, I'm really impressed with, it, with what they've done. I'm impressed. I like the game. It's hilarious. Uh, yes, I played Inscription. I have not played Control. However, I do own it, and I want to play it on stream. But Inscription is one of the best games I've ever played. So fucking good. So fucking weird. So fucking good. But amazing. Holy shit. Like, all my cultists getting stuck in the door of the cathedral, or max-level cultists stuck with the, ep the epiphany eyes. <laughs> Those are examples of the slightly mild or silly annoying bugs. And that's the shit, like, I'll laugh at it, and I'll move on. Same. That is not something that's going to make me go write a terrible review or not play a game. Like, that's just growing pains of a game. This game is better than most games I've seen come out for 60 bucks in the past year. So... Balls in your court, AAA Studios. Impress us. Because I haven't been impressed in a while. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, would you consider this indie? Because it's Massive Monster. Because I've been very, most of my absolute favorite games in the past, I don't know, three, five years have all been kind of indie or smaller studio-based games. And, they're, and it's not because of that. I find that out later. It's just, they're better. I feel like there's heart in them or something. Is it great because it's poop-based? Yes. Not only that, but yes. Usually means no publisher, right? But a lot of the game, a lot of the titles from Devolver feel like indies. Yeah, they feel like, you know, they might have the money backing, but they still got a very small, tight-knit studio building the actual content who, has, who have heart in it, you know? Not that large studios don't have heart in their games. It's just, it's spread out over hundreds of people versus 10. They only have three games? Damn! If this is their third, they're doing well. I wouldn't just say that. I'm actually very impressed. I'm kind of a picky hoe when it comes to this shit. I'm invisible, but the other cultists still laugh at my invisible body in jail. That's just not nice. At least you could give them just a goatsy, a nice see-through goatsy. Could be fun. Maybe they'll find a polyp. Maybe you'll skip a doctor's appointment. You don't know. Anyways, go hang out with my friend Katie. My vocal cords are throbbing. She has a cult going. Hopefully the the thing the the extension works better tonight, but if not, hopefully it works by Tuesday. <sighs> Be good and brush your teeth. Wash your bong because dirty bongs are disgusting and fungal pneumonia is forever. Key after sex and self-loving. Wash your hands and I will see you on Tuesday. Did you take your joy today? Never forget to take your joy and I guarantee your day will go as smooth as velvet. Bow.